Welcome to the English Language Institute of Singapore's podcast. I'm your host, Eunice Lim. This is the third episode in our Singapore Writing Institute series. The Singapore Writing Institute is known as SWE for short, and it is hosted by Alice. In our SWE podcast series, we invite teacher leaders from the SWE alumni to explore questions teachers have about the teaching, learning, and assessment of writing. In today's episode, we will discuss how teachers can move their student writers forward in their writing. With me today is Master Teacher Audrey Lee, who is one of the SWE facilitators. You will remember her from a previous episode on Inquiry Through Dialogue Using Questioning Techniques. Before we listen to two SWE alumni speak about their practice of teaching and assessing writing to move writers forward, Audrey, could you tell us what it means to move student writers forward in a teaching of writing? Hi, everyone. In this episode, we will discuss two ways teachers can move student writers forward in their writing. First, by providing feedback for impact. Second, by planning learning experiences to teach craft moves. Let's talk about providing feedback. Many teachers have incorporated peer feedback as part of the process of teaching writing. But students don't seem to know what to do with the feedback they receive, or they find that it does not help them to improve. Why do you think this is so? Very often, teachers provide feedback after the student has finished a piece of writing. This is often referred to as backward-looking feedback. Backward-looking feedback tends to focus on students' performance, not their development. But there's little that the student can do to learn from the feedback given at the end of the writing process. Perhaps, teachers could offer students feedback early in the writing process. This is referred to as using feedback to feed forward. This gives students the space to improve their skills, learner strategies, attitudes, behavior, allowing them to grow as writers. Such feedback allows students to apply their learning to not only the piece they are working on, but also to subsequent pieces they write. Let's listen to Rafia Yahya and Angelina Tang, two SWE alumni who will talk about their experiences of receiving feedback on their writing during SWE. Hi, I'm Rafia, a lead teacher of English language in Nian Primary School. I've been teaching English language at the primary level for 32 years. I participated in SWE in 2016 and at SWE, we experienced ourselves as teacher writers. Each of us was to write and two pieces of our writing would be published. I remember going on a field trip to a museum with the others for a saturation ride. During the saturation ride, we immersed ourselves in the setting of the museum and we were free to write about anything. Inspired, I began drafting my piece. I took the perspective of a character in a photo exhibit that had caught my attention. After that, I read my draft to Audrey, my SWE facilitator. Let me read to you the introduction to that first draft. The year was 1977. Mongolia was slowly returning to its normal sea where men would continue to perform important military or heavy labor while women toiled in the homes tending to the needs of the family. The most important duty of all, however, was to populate the land. In this land that valued fertility over virginity, lived a beautiful Mongolian girl named Gerald. When Audrey first gave me feedback on my draft, I remember her starting off by responding to all the strengths of my piece. That felt good. Eventually, when she brought up the issue of voice or the lack of it, I was receptive and reflective. She gave me feedback from the point of view of a reader and told me how she could not relate to the character or the Mongolian setting. After receiving Audrey's feedback, I revised the introduction and in my subsequent draft, I decided to take on the first-person perspective, modernize the context, and bring a bit of my life into it. Let me read a few lines from my revised draft to show you what I mean. (music) 
I lay in sheets of silk, looking into the eyes of ones I had loved so dearly. Eyes that beheld devotion and unwavering love. I had never felt so tranquil and serene as I did that very moment. I knew then that I had finally embraced my inner peace and abandoned any desire to struggle. Wasn't it Rumi who had said that there comes a time when nothing is meaningful except surrendering to love? Can you note the difference that feedback had made to my writing? Audrey's timely feedback had helped me understand what writing with a voice means. Now, when I write and teach writing, I always consider how voice can bring life to a piece. The feedback I had received allowed me to move forward as a writer. Now let's meet Angelina Tang, the other three alumni we spoke to. Hi, I'm Angelina Tang, a senior teacher of English language in Daman Secondary School. I've been teaching English language at the secondary level for 18 years, and I participated in three in 2015. I'll start with a reading of an extract from my first draft. It was a piece about my fear that there is nothing after death, and life is for nothing. What is the meaning of life? This opening right stems from a read aloud from a book called The Meaning of Life by Robert Fulgham. Robert Fulgham has found the meaning of his life, yet I am still finding the meaning to my life. It is the quintessential concern of life ever since I could formulate mature thoughts, whenever that was. When I was given feedback on this first draft at the planning stage, uh, I was grateful that I had an empathetic audience who could ask me questions that made me relook the piece. I didn't feel that I was criticised or that I wasn't good enough. Uh, In fact, the feedback I received had made me eager to understand the reader's perspective so that I could see how I could change my writing. It made me want to improve my writing to modify the way I write. For effect, my very first draft evolved into this. An extract from a piece called Immortal Me. On a calm, quiet night as I lay in the darkness, drifting into dreamland, I'm seized by a panic. In the midst of sorting out messy memories in my mind, I was seized with the fear that after I pass away, all these past experiences will mean nothing. My last day will be the end. All I've done will be without meaning. There will not even be a consciousness left. It is this that anchored me to ask the single question of my life. What is the meaning of my life? It is the quintessential concern of my life, ever since I could formulate mature thoughts, whenever that was. Feedback in the form of thoughtful and piercing questions while I was crafting my draft had spurred in me the courage to write one of the most personal pieces that I've written for publication. The feedback I received was in the form of questions from my peers. These questions helped me generate more ideas and think about what I really wanted to say. As a writer, I was able to select which questions I wanted to respond to and was given the autonomy to do this. When we consider Rafia and Angelina's experiences as writers during SWE, we see that one way of moving writers forward is to give feedback that is impactful. This entails giving feedback as early as in the planning and drafting stages. I can see how feedback that feeds forward has helped both Rafia and Angelina as writers. Would these be the same possible outcomes for our student writers? Before we explore if this is possible for our student writers, let's recall research done by John Hattie with Helen Timperley in 2017 about effective feedback. So for feedback to be effective, it must answer three questions. Where am I going? How am I progressing? And where to next? In other words, it is feedback 
that focuses on goals, progress and next steps. Rafia and Angelina were able to move forward as writers because the feedback provided them with specific actionable guidance for improvement. So coming back to your question, Eunice, is it possible for our student writers to receive feedback that feeds forward and motivates them to improve their writing? Let's listen to Rafia and Angelina talk about their experience of giving impactful feedback to their students. My colleagues and I used to provide students with feedback only at the end of their writing. After learning about the value of giving feedback to students on an ongoing basis during SWE, I persuaded my colleagues to look more closely at the assessment data from our students' writing. This enabled us to decide on the planning of learning experiences for our student writers. We used the EL Syllabus 2020 to guide us in making informed decisions. We also looked at giving quality feedback that feeds forward throughout the writing process. We modeled the process of giving feedback and are now honing peer and self-assessment skills in our students. These assessment skills will help them actively regulate their own learning instead of relying on teacher feedback after submitting their final pieces of writing. As we model and teach our students to make informed choices, they will cultivate the practice of self-assessment when they are selecting and developing ideas. Ravya and her colleagues have taken active steps to teach their students to give peer feedback or to self-assess as part of ongoing assessment. It is important for us to note that while self-assessing, our student writers need to understand the purpose, audience, context and culture, the PACC, of the writing task to generate, select and organise ideas well. The PACC will also guide the choice of words and the crafting of sentences according to the conventions of language and voice. Let's find out from Angelina how she created space for peer feedback in the classroom. When we include the giving of peer feedback in the writing process, we offer our student writers a reader. The reader provides verbal feedback. I tell my students a good writer needs to be a good listener. With peer feedback as part of the writing process in my classroom, the interested writer listens intensely to how the reader relates to the piece of writing. And already in this process, the writer begins to self-regulate, agreeing or disagreeing, and ideating while listening. When my students engage in peer feedback, I deepen their ability to self-regulate. In my class, I provide students time to self-assess and refine their ideas. My students plan, draft, then go on to provide peer feedback. Feedback from other reader writers allows my students a time and space to review and revise their ideas, to change their minds and refine their thoughts. I've noticed a change in students' sense of ownership and voice. When I create opportunities, for students to receive and offer reader response to their peers' writing. Let's recap the ideas raised. Teachers can use ongoing assessment in the writing process. For example, if students are struggling with generating and selecting ideas and developing and organizing them, we can offer feedback on these skills so there is just-in-time intervention to improve their writing skills, learner strategies, attitudes and behavior. At the revision, and not just at the proofreading stages, we can offer focused grammar and vocabulary lessons to improve their language use to create impact on their readers. We've talked about feedback for impact. Now, let's consider the writer's craft and find out how Rafia and Angelina have planned learning experiences to teach it. I begin by analysing my students' work in different phases of the writing process. In doing so, I identify the learning outcomes and skills, learner strategies, attitudes and behaviour my students need to acquire. Then I plan for responsive teaching to cater to their needs. I focus on teaching the writer's craft, such as word choice, grammar, sentence fluency and even the use of punctuation. I also use mentor text to help my students notice writer's craft in authentic texts and 
to hone the appropriate skills, learner strategies, attitudes and behaviour in my student writers. I used to teach the writer's craft right at the beginning of a lesson unit. Now, I teach the writer's craft only after the students have had the opportunity to generate their own ideas, write and receive some feedback or response to their ideas. This allows my students to have their own context to apply the writer's craft to improve their writing. I see. Teachers can use student writing to assess students' learning needs and then design learning experiences to teach them craft moves. We asked Rafia and Angelina to tell us more about how this can be done. With my students, the teaching of craft moves begins when I teach reading. Whenever my students engage with stellar text, comprehension passages or newspaper articles, I teach my students to notice the craft the writers use. Sometimes, they look at the story elements or how dialogue has been used. At other times, they look at language features of the text. We discuss how these affect them as readers. I discuss perspectives and sometimes get students to do hot seating and take a stand on a particular issue. This helps them strengthen their awareness of writer's craft. When I teach my students craft moves, I teach them to read with a writer's eye. When engaged in reading, my students consider what the writer means. They consider his purpose or the point he's trying to make. The organization of his ideas or even his style of writing. This awareness helps my students make considered choices when drafting. They assess their own writing by reviewing and revising their ideas. I also model how to ask questions such as, what is my stand? What is my point? I model how to probe deeper, asking them, what do you mean? My students can then clarify their thoughts. I also ask, why did you include this point? Does it explain your stand? These questions help my students think about why they include certain ideas in their pieces. Thank you, Rafia and Angelina, for offering your insights gained through your teaching practice in class. We have discussed two ways teachers can move student writers forward in their writing. First, by providing feedback for impact. Second, by planning learning experiences to teach craft moves. To sum up our conversation on moving the writer forward, Situate the teaching of aspects of the writer's craft as part of ongoing assessment of learning to address the writer's need to improve the writer's skill. If we wait till students feel that they have finished their writing, they would probably be reluctant to revise it as so much time and effort had already been invested in the writing. The writing process is much like the act of cooking. If we see ourselves as chefs coaching our junior cooks to prepare a dish, we will assess each step of the cooking process, intervening with advice when necessary. We would teach them how to improve or save the dish if they omit adding the necessary ingredients or if they overuse any flavoring. We would teach them to test and taste the effect of the dish for themselves and also ask others to taste their dish. This would ensure that the final dish is one of quality. Thank you, Audrey, for your insights. That brings us to the end of this episode. We would like to express our gratitude to the SWE alumni, Rafia and Angelina, for making time to contribute to this podcast. For more information about our podcast, visit our website at go.gov.sg forward slash podcast. Thank you for listening.